Harvin here with you, broadcasting live from Reykjavik, Iceland. And uh, with me in the studio uh, is uh, Lila Moses' daughter, yes. and also Brynja Haldor's daughter. Do I have one? Yeah, this, almost correctly. <laughs> almost correctly. Almost correctly. So, uh, Brynja, let me ask you, if I may, um, what what's your take on, on how Iceland got into the economic crisis that it's in and how the people responded, how the government responded, and, and basically what's going on and why why you are upset with the political process. In less than at, five minutes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. As, 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 as a, mm. a, a, a former you know, participant or a pro participant in all this. Well, what happened is, well, there are many things, but mostly we had the regulated banks who went crazy, went on a spending spree, and when they were bankrupt, we decided to bail them out. Instead of treating them like any other company, just let the go bankrupt or guarantee a part of the of the assets, mm. not not everything, mm. like like we did. So, what is happening now is that we have had a crisis for a few years, um, but I don't really see, I don't see what other countries see when everyone's saying that, oh, everything is horrible here in Iceland. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Yeah. It seems like life is quite normal, yeah. although uh, I understand that that housing debt, household debt was in some ways part of the equity that the banks held, mm -hmm. and many people, there was a big housing bubble here just as there was all over the world as, oh. as these banks were offering cheap money and some people were turning over houses. And so a lot of people in the United States, we've got, I think it's a third or maybe half of all mortgages are what what's referred to as underwater a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar mortgage on a house that's worth sixty thousand or a three hundred you know whatever it may be but it's typically about a twenty or thirty percent the people owe more than what the house what yeah. the house is worth I understand here it could be a hundred or hundreds of percent more because of the way that the banks have played this game yes that's correct so what you know if, if your house if you owe three hundred percent more than your house is worth what do you do you talk to your bank. Yeah. You talk to the bank and you get a deal. We have what we call the 110% way. Mm -hmm. The banks are offering people uh, to pay less mm -hmm. if the, um, the the debt in their house is more than 110% of what it's worth. Mm -hmm. And we have all all kinds of uh, of ways for people in trouble. Yeah. But. Do they work? I mean, in the United States, we, uh, the Obama administration came in and said, okay, we're going to bail out the banks. And part of that bailout was the idea that the banks would then loan the money to people. In fact, they had a special program where banks mm -hmm. could pay down the, the principal mm -hmm. and, or the int change the interest, pay down the principal mm -hmm. and uh, deduct it and get re made whole by the government. And the banks just chose not to do that for, for various reasons. Uh, partially, it was not all that well structured. But mostly, I guess, it's more profitable for the banks to just hold on to people by the throat. Well, some banks are doing more than the government is allowing them. You mean it, more good stuff? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like yeah. landsbanking. Interesting. Ma maybe to explain that yeah. is that uh, Le actually the, yeah, the, the, the banks that collapsed, they went into receivership. Mm -hmm. The government took them over. Mm -hmm. And the assets of the old banks that collapsed were moved into new banks with almost the same names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was a discount on the value of the assets right. when they moved from the old to the new. And the discu discount was on average 50%. Mm -hmm. So the new banks have quite um, a range, you know, big range to, to uh, uh, write down or, right. or give a haircut on, right. on uh, uh, loans, on housing loans. Mm -hmm. but, but the problem is that they are not doing it. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, when the uh, new banks were es established, um, the, uh, the government uh, struck a deal with the creditors mm -hmm. and, and gave them an ownership mm -hmm. uh, in these new, new banks. They put their assets in there mm -hmm. from the old banks. And um, uh, the, the creditors will, will get a part of the recovery. Uh, if the recovery is more, uh, if they recover more than the, uh, the value of the assets moved to the new banks. Right. So, so, so to, to, to convert, to, if I can hyper simplify uh, that. <laughs> 
um, hope, I think, um, it, it would be like if a bank took, uh, had a mortgage for, and I'll use dollars if it's yeah. all right, because I don't think uh, Americans would know Kroner um, and the exchange rate. But if you had a house that was worth 100000 uh, that had a mortgage of $100,000, and the value of the house was $100,000. And when the first banks failed, they sold that $100,000 mortgage for $50,000 to the new banks. Mm -hmm. And then the new banks should have gone to the homeowners. The whole idea was go to the homeowners and say, mm -hmm. hey, we bought this for $50,000, so now you only owe us $50,000. Yeah. But instead, the bank said, hey, we bought this for $50,000, and you still owe us $100,000, yes. and we're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on top of this, we have indexed uh, housing loans. Right, so, so if there's any inflation, yeah. you owe us even more than 100000 The principal yes. increases, and it has increased by 40% since 1st of January 2008. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, uh, and this, is, this has provoked, the, this has provoked the, cl the political crisis where you had two referenda and you had the, the, the government basically change, yes? Uh, well, well um, when the government changed, uh, it was um, uh, anger, it was because of uh, people's anger uh, over um, the, in, the inability of the politicians to safeguard the interest of the public. Right. You know, a lot of people saw their, um, the value of their assets erode. You yeah. know, they had shares in the banks and suddenly they didn't own anything. Yeah. So, and, 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 and yeah, and, and we saw much of this in the United States as well. It's not, not anywhere near as bad. But, so, um, Lila, if, if this was all caused by the banks having been deregulated, by basically neoliberalism, by by what in America we would refer to as Republican or conservative economic policies, mm -hmm. less government, right? Yeah. How is it that there are any conservatives left in Iceland? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. How can yeah? You know, we're going to have some as guests later on in the program who say, "Oh, in fact, we're going to have a libertarian on who says, oh, you know, the whole problem was too much government de re re regulation in the very first place.'" How, how can it, anybody it, say that I having mean, to live through yeah. this? You're actually talking to uh, to people who are not conservatives. Yes, I, I, mm -hmm. I understand. Um, and and they, their explanations for the uh, banking crisis is the um, the fall of the Lehman Brothers. So uh, it's not their fault. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and there are people, uh, voters, who, who believe this um, still. But we, we had... Um, uh, a truth commission uh, established by the parliament in Iceland, mm -hmm. which kind of uh, uh, revealed what what happened and how the owners of the banks actually robbed them from inside. Right. So we have some facts that mm -hmm. contradict this. The still pe mm -hmm. people uh, are supporting the, the conservatives Sur in Iceland. Surprisingly, the polls are showing us that the mm -hmm. in Independence Party, who is a, um, which is a liberal or right-wing mm -hmm. po uh, party and used to be in power for 18 years. By liberal you mean what in the United States we would call right conservative. Right-wing, conservative, yeah, conservative yeah. Republican. Maybe yeah. better to use right-wing and left-wing than yeah, yeah. other language. The here. most right-wing party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the polls are showing us that they will have 50% of the vote if it would have an election today. And now, in in many countries I've been in, the 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 right-wing parties get the vote not by virtue of being right or wrong on economics, but by things like in Denmark, for example, the, mm. the right-wing uh, folks mostly are just anti-immigrant, mm. you know, uh, or anti-Muslim or something like that. Is mm. there is there something that unites, the, and in the United States, many right-wingers are right-wingers, mm. not because of economics, they don't realize that they're being economically taken advantage of, but they're right-wing because they're afraid that the government wants to register their guns, or they, mm. they think that the politicians are not fundamentalist Christians enough or something like that. Is there some piece of the right-wing party here and the right-wingers that isn't about economics that gives them that 50%? That unites them? I would think hating the, the government. Really? Yeah, because in the, in the last elections, uh, the Independence Party had 25% of the poll. Mm -hmm. Still, after after uh, Iceland's bankruptcy, still they had 25% of the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think most of those vo voters that are changing between parties every election the undecided voters, they are just listening to what they hear in the media. Mm -hmm. And a large majority of the people 
or really unhappy about what the this left wing government has done. Mm -hmm. The one that our party, our former party, is in, in government with, uh, are just unhappy with a lot of things, and therefore they decide to vote the independence party because they think that that they will see a change. As if, as if the government was responsible for the, and and in, mm -hmm. and in a way, the government was responsible for the failure because they didn't regulate the banks in the first place. They mm -hmm. didn't, you know, like, like the U.S. and Canada. Uh, Canada never had a bank crisis. Canada's mm -hmm. banks are doing just fine. They're the most heavily heavily regulated banks in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I, how, um, uh, Lila, uh, Lilia, mm -hmm. Lilia, how do, in, in in just in the twenty thirty seconds. How do people hold that? Is it just, is, is there just, is it a, I'm, well, let me, let me ask you that again when we come back from the break, because it just, it just astounds me when there's a, a fairly simple truth out there and people um, don't acknowledge it. And I, I, I so let, let's talk, but we're, the music is playing right now. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. This is Tom Hartman live from Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, and stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. We'll be right back from Iceland. Stick around. Tom Hartman here with you. happy with the government we're back yeah. welcome back tom hartman mm -hmm. here with you uh, live from reykjavik iceland and 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 in fact you were just suggesting uh lilia yeah. th uh, that that we talk about why the people are unhappy with the government yeah why why only about one third of the voters support this government yes. well the first thing is that the people want uh, the good times before the crash back they want to. Um, they, they want to be back in the bubble. Yeah, they want. It was a wonderful time. I mean, even for us, the two for of us here. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and then um, the the government is a big disappointment for the left lefties. You mm -hmm. can say that because what what the government did with the support of the IMF was to um, restore everything um, the same way as it was before, except um, they re-regulated many things and i participated in that in mm -hmm. that uh, we re regulated the financial sector uh, it's for example prohibited to pay out bonuses except the bank has been earning uh, high uh, profits for three years mm -hmm. in a row um, and it's also um, they have to um, uh, inform the uh, surveillance um, authority if they uh, give a very high amount um, or they loan uh, if they give uh, they loan out very high uh, amount. Right. Yeah. So they so there's um, um, a registration of all all their um, big uh, businesses mm -hmm. now. Uh, but uh, they the government has uh, reprivatized also uh, two of the three banks, mm -hmm. and the only reason why one bank is still owned by the government or 80, 85 percent of the shares is are owned by the government is because of the ISAF obligation. That's the ISAF bank. That's the national bank. Yeah, that's the, that, the, the, the remaining. The ISAF, uh, the bank that's owned by the, uh, by the taxpayers right. um, has to pay um, the Dutch and the British taxpayer back uh -huh. a lot of money. It's been filled with taxpayers' money, so that this the money will be used to pay the ISAF debt, the right. same debt as this people, the Icelandic the people, said no in a referendum. So how is it that the people say no in a referendum and twice. the government twice, twice and the government ignores that? How is that possible? I ask myself the same question every day. And that is well partly the reason why I decided to leave the Left Greenish Party. And I've been yeah, I've been I've been disappointed again and again for two years since we joined this government. Mm -hmm. The reason why our, my former party, <laughs> the Left Greenist, are in government is because they promised not to apply for EU membership. Mm -hmm. That is the European Union. Right. And 
that's that is why they had what 20 20 something percent of the vote that is a record yeah uh, but a few months after after the election they applied okay. and uh, many people among myself were ex felt betrayed because of that yeah there's a there's a parallel to that in the United States I think that um, in 1992 in that election Bill Clinton and George Bush um, Ross Perot came along and said, don't join the WTO and NAFTA. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of, you know, NAFTA is sort of like joining the EU. And he got 20% of the vote. Just mm -hmm. a crazy old coot billionaire with a running weight mate who was almost incoherent. Mm -hmm. And he still got 20% of the vote. And then Bill Clinton went ahead and we joined NAFTA anyway. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. so stick around. We're live here in Reykjavik, Iceland. Welcome back, Tom Hartman here with you, broadcasting live from Reykjavik, Iceland, where uh, it is well into the afternoon, into mm -hmm. the early evening, in fact. And uh, with me, let me change pages here, uh, with me, uh, Lil Lilia Moses' daughter and Brynja Haldor's daughter. Yeah, I, I'm mangling them both. Do you want to, do you want to say? No, no, that's great. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You're getting closer each time. You <laughs> one, one of these days. So, um, I think that, you know, the, the, this dissatisfaction with government is something that politicians always seem to use. Here in the United States, we have um, uh, the, the Republican Party is basically running on a platform of let's have no government, let's deregulate everything, let's just leave it all alone and everything will be wonderful because the free market works everything out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and this is this is the, the, the message of the right mm -hmm. and the economic right as well. And and it's almost you know, increasingly in the United States people are, are I think calling this out as as really a corporatist mm -hmm. position, not a left or right position, but really it's corporations versus the people. And I'm curious, I, I, I know, uh, Brynja, you've done work um, about the, 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 the mosque, the, the building of a mosque here. You've written about it, or maybe not. I, yeah, I no, it was I, I didn't do that. Oh, okay, <laughs> and the police and food and fairness. Well, maybe I had it, somebody else. But um, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on, mm -hmm. on, in the U.S., the Occupy Wall Street movement. Is there mm -hmm. anything going on like that here? Is that why the two of you have left what was mm -hmm. already, you know, kind of the equivalent of the, the left wing part of the Democratic Party in the United States, the, mm. the established left party, uh, you have left that, um, is your thoughts? I, we actually sorry. have a small movement, similar An Occupy movement. movement. Yeah, Marvel. who doesn't have that? Occupy Reykjavik. <laughs> yeah, we actually have that, people who are camping outside of our, our parliament. Uh -huh. um, that's not the reason why I left the, Green party, the left Green Party. Mm. I decided to leave it for, for months, mm. actually. The, the EU betrayal was the biggest reason. IMF was another. The environmental issues is another. We still being in NATO is another. Mm. And many, many other reasons. So basically, you, you uh, are, your position would be Iceland for Icelanders and leave no, us alone? Or? Isn't that a bit racist? Well, <laughs> I, I didn't mean it in a racial context. I meant it more like this is our country. We don't need to merge with NATO and we don't need to merge with the EU. It, and well, my meaning is that we should just be independent. Economically? Yeah. Politically? Militarily? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I'm a pacifist, so that's that's the reason why I don't want to be a member of NATO. Mm -hmm. And we don't have an army, we don't need an army, and we should should not align with people who kill all the people. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And EU is, well, firstly, because I am pro-democracy. Mm. If we enter the EU, then we would give a lot of of our powers to some to to bureaucrats in, in Brussels, yeah. just really shortly, but of course for many, many reasons. Yeah, and and uh, Lilia, your thoughts on the difference between democracy and what's what's happening now? And and the question I asked you both of you before the break, you know, how could it be that the people twice voted 
to to tell the bankers to go to hell, basically, and the government still won't do it. I, well, the government has been saying that the people, of course, don't want to uh, pay higher taxes. That's why they voted against it. Mm -hmm. And it should never have gone to a referendum. This question whether to um, to give a state guarantee on uh, on the deposits of the old banks that went yeah. bankrupt. Um, so they, that's what they have been saying all the time. All mm -hmm. people never want to pay higher taxes, and it would mean higher taxes. So if we do what the people said, it will cause yeah. us to raise their taxes, yeah. and they'll be even more unhappy with us. But already, yeah. they're, nobody's very happy with them. Okay. No, no. But if you compare the situation in Iceland with that of the U.S., you know, the Occupy mm -hmm. uh, Wall Street is about the blue inequality or, you know, the inequality between the richest 1% and the 99%. Yes. And then you say in the Midwest, uh, you have a red inequality. You have inequality be between those who have a university education and the other ones who, who never got the opportunity to go right. there. And I say, well, we have a purple inequality in Iceland. Mm -hmm. Um, the inequality has been increasing after the crisis be uh, between those who had debt uh, when the bank crashed and those who um, were without any debt. Mm. Because, right. as I said, um, those who, who only so, had deposits, they were fully guaranteed by the taxpayers. Not You, you know, we had a, a, a blanket right. deposit guarantee by the taxpayers. Well, and we had to increase taxes on, on people who didn't have any deposits in the banks in order to finance this. And those who did not have deposits in the banks, they had debt, they had loans, mm -hmm. and they have increased by 40%, and they are not being written down. They are actually but increasing in volume. And, and, the, and, and the vulture banks, I understand, there's, these vulture banks have something to do with this, these banks that bought these de depreciated assets and... and the sharks, we call them. The sharks. The yeah, sharks. They, they are here in Iceland. They own two of the three banks. They own say. two of the three <laughs> banks. They, mm -hmm. they, they bought these things on pennies yeah. on the dollar. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they even got a more discount than the 50% we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Because they bought these uh, assets that had been written down by 50% even. So at the 10% value. Or so something. the so the, the people lose and the banker bankers are making out fine. Is there any, in the minute we have left, what, what could take Iceland out of this? Right now? Yeah. Well, what we, what we should have done is that we should not have bailed out the banks. Right. We should have secured a part of the deposits. Right, but it's, yeah. it's too late now but, for but, but, but Going now, forward, what do you do? The people have to rise up. The yeah. people who are, who are who are suffering from the greater and indebtedness. And we should have a say in important matters. Say that again? We should have a say in important matters. We should have a lot of referendums. Uh-huh. On so you're you're uh, um, you're advocating a more direct democracy. You're yes, saying if the people say it, damn it, do it. You know, mm -hmm. to the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the government should listen to the referendum. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get rid of the cronyism in Iceland. We need to get rid of these old parties um, and 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 uh, the elites yeah. who who are in power after the crisis and were before the crisis. That's, and more segregation nice. of powers. There you of go. Thank you very much. Thank you both so much for being with us today. We'll be right back from Iceland.